Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. This is Sunday on Memorial Day weekend. I'm making this. Uh, today, mm, 2 p.m., first meal, eggs, omelet with some cheese in it, and some bacon. Lots of good bacon. And that was my meal for today. Noi has been eating pretty much as soon as she gets up. And she's been trying to do these small meals. And she's been adding a little bit of carbohydrates. Maybe sometimes it's sweet potato now. Maybe sometimes it's three tablespoons of beans. But. She hasn't had any problem with her blood sugar if she keeps spiking herself with carbs. Today, Noi woke up, and as soon as she woke up, she said her mouth hurt, and she really needed to go to the dentist. Now, like I said, today's Sunday, and... uh I said, do you want to go to the dentist that I went to about, I don't know, I guess it was eight, nine months ago. And it was here in Pattaya. But she said no. She knew of some smaller dentist somewhere. So she called on a Sunday, got on the queue, uh, called around 11 a.m., got on a queue for four PM. Now they call it over here a queue. They don't call it an appointment. They don't call it getting on a waiting list. Over here, everything's queue. You get in a queue, on a queue. But here's the point I want to make. How easy is it where you live to Go to a dentist on a Sunday, unannounced. Hey, I want to come to a dentist. Can I get in? And if you do get on the queue, she had basically four cavities. She had two down low on the inside, two on the outside. On this side and two over here. So they filled these cavities for, let me make sure I get this price right for you. Okay. Okay, they filled each cavity and this included. The x-rays. They filled each cavity for $21.82 U.S. dollars. 800 Thai baht. 21.82 cents. $21.82 cents a cavity. So, where you are, can you get to a dentist? Have a cavity filled? On a Sunday, without a previous appointment, make it at 11, get there at 4, $21.82. It's amazing medical here. And people think that Southeast Asia has to be like third world countries. Now, there's a little bit of third world in them. We just got the notification today that on May 29th that the electric company is cutting the power for about 14 hours to the local water pumping processing facility near here. And they said you'll be without water 
and they said they're cutting the power to a water facility because they're upgrading the subsystem to provide more stable, more reliable power to this area. And uh, so they said, you'll be without water for 14 hours. Well, let me tell you, this third world country we're in here, how many of you, if the water quits working, have a high pressure pumping system, as long as you have electricity works, but if that doesn't work, you have low pressure gravity feed with enough water in a plastic fiberglass storage tank that would last two people five days if the water quits. This house does. The, the water pressure is really good because there's a water pressure pump that takes the incoming pressure and accelerates it and pumps it up even more and pushes it out. The pump doesn't run all the time. It senses when there's a drop in water pressure by opening the valve, and then it kicks on. And then when you close the valve, it senses the backup of high pressure, and it turns off. But for a third world country, well, I know my house was pretty nice in Cincinnati. Had a lot of neat things, including 24-hour or a five-day generator system that was whole house. But I didn't have five days worth of backup water with water pumps. Here, everybody does. Now, you might be wondering why they do that over there, and they don't do it as much in the United States. Well, one reason is the 1,200 gallons, I think, is what we've got. 1,500 gallons, 1,200 gallons, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how many, but it's big. It's like uh, six foot tall and five foot across or something. And uh, it's outside. Now, you couldn't put it outside in most parts of the United States. I don't care if you live in Florida. There's times when it goes below freezing. You could live in Texas, and there's times where it goes below freezing. But the vast majority of the United States have periods during the winter time when that would freeze outside. So not only does it have that tank, but that tank is filtered water. It goes through a massive water filter before it goes into that tank. There's also an underground tank that's just as big, if not bigger, that is filled with non-filtered water. And that water has a pump that comes out of that tank and it's used to run the sprinkler system for the plants. So they put non-filtered water on the plants. So even though our water won't be working on May 29th, should we need the auto sprinkler, which right now is turned off because we're in a rainy season. Believe me, we've gotten plenty of rain on those plants in the last couple of weeks. I mean, it's rained almost every day. But during times we need it, we probably got a thousand gallons worth of water that they use to water the plants that's underground with its own pumping system that as long as we got electricity. Now, houses on both sides of us have solar power and probably battery systems. I've never been inside, nor have I asked the uh, owners. I just happened to see all the solar panels on the roof. If this house had solar with batteries to cover those times when and believe me we have many times here where it goes out for a half an hour to an hour and a half and it seems like it's always we hear some explosion and some transformer blew somewhere 
Now, in Thailand here, we had a heat wave just a couple of weeks ago to where the Thai government said that the power usage in the, in the kingdom of Thailand was higher than it's ever been in history. It was really hot. Everybody had their air cons on, and it used a lot of electricity. But if this house had solar power with a battery pack, or this house had a whole house generator system that ran on uh, diesel, man, this house had everything. Uh, so we end up with the power failures once in a while. But as I sit here on Memorial Weekend, I want to thank those men and women who gave their lives when called upon everywhere in the world. And I just wish they were never called upon. We fight too many goddamn wars in this world. Now, I'm sorry, I, I cussed. Somebody, somebody told me they'd give me a thumbs down every time I cuss, but there's just too many wars. And it's not looking any better. In fact, I don't know when I worry more about war than, than when I was a little kid doing duck and covers because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. You know, that scared us as kids. We were worried about the wars. You know, so I don't know why. Yeah, I do know why. Why is because in the debt-based economies of the world, it is so typical for the superpowers to rely on the military-industrial complex of their countries as part of their GDP. Need a little stimulus? Let's start a conflict with somebody. That's always good to spend a trillion. That goes on our GDP and makes everybody happy and they have money to spend, which further debases your dollar because they had to borrow it to go to war, which is exactly what sank every single major world power since the Greeks. Spreading themselves too thin militarily the cost of maintaining a military led them to debase their own currency, to take silver coins and to make them with other alloys in the middle, degrade the quality of their silver and gold coins to the point where the people didn't want them anymore. And it was all based, the Greeks, the Romans, the French, the Spanish, Portuguese, Britain, everybody sooner or later expands their military and does it on borrowed money, and they've been doing it for centuries. And then they call the men and women up and they want them to go fight over territory, over religion. And this was Memorial Day, and people don't want to hear this, but if, you, if you're going to have a Memorial Day and you're thinking about the men and women who gave their lives fighting some war, fighting some conflict, and even those who gave their lives being in the military who died during training missions and during ordinary operations of ships at sea. You know, being on aircraft carrier is one of the most dangerous jobs in the military, just being on the aircraft carrier. Uh, 
We all think about wanting to thank those people for giving their lives. Well, maybe we ought to take a little consideration and a little bit of brain food and think about not thanking them so much for giving their lives as as well as adding on how can we keep from asking others to sacrifice their lives. As we get older, we think more about life. We think more about death. You know, I've already beat the odds as far as I'm concerned. I didn't think I'd ever live this long. And I did not serve in the military. Believe it or not, the draft quit just like a couple months, I think, before my military age came up to be included in the lottery of whether or not you were drafted at the age of 18. So they ended the draft and they went to the voluntary military. Uh, which I wish we didn't need a military at all. I wish there wasn't borders. I wish there was just one people who learned to get along. That wish will never come true. It would take an all-out worldwide alien invasion from outer space to unite the people of the world who are human beings to work towards a common goal. There's no way that they'd ever work together other than that. And then they'd have to believe that those aliens, for some reason, have changed their mind about their religions. Because there are certain religions that are never going to work with other religions unless they believe that what they believed in all their life was a lie. And they have to come to that conclusion on their own. And for a going carnivore in Thailand video, as you know, sometimes I tell stories and sometimes I go on rants. I don't know how many of you people who watch this actually watch this to now. But if you did, please leave a comment and just say, watched it all, saw the end, something, let me know, share the uh, YouTube, uh, loves it when people share as well as give a like, but I'm just saying it's Memorial Day and there's more to that than just eating hamburgers and hot dogs at the picnic. I hope for the young people of this world that somebody wakes up and says, stop this nonsense. Yeah, this, this silliness. How many lives have been lost on both sides in Ukraine? You know, uh, it just isn't, it just isn't good. So many Ukrainians are, and Russians, have left their countries who, they just refuse to participate. I mean, the number of Russians here in Thailand, especially in the Phuket area, is off the charts. And from what I understand, the number of Ukrainians and the number of Russians who've left their country and went to the country of Georgia in Eastern Europe is tremendously higher than normal. People just said they're not going to cons conscript me into going and fighting this silly war. 
Uh, people blame Putin. Yeah, he he was the first one to throw a punch, but that doesn't mean he actually antagonized the conflict. I mean, in reality, they could have they could have sat down and quit goading Putin into doing this. And, you know, Putin said from the very beginning, all he wanted was a guarantee from Ukraine and from NATO that Ukraine would not become a NATO member and allow NATO troops on its soil against the Russian border. Yeah, that's all he wanted. Now, he didn't have to go to war over it, but he he is in charge of a superpower, and he said, if, if you guys keep doing this, you're not going to like it. And uh, say what you will, he wasn't lying. He's absolutely destroyed that country. Now, I got a question. Who the heck is going to pay for rebuilding it? You don't think Russia's going to pay, not unless it becomes Russia. Not unless they take it over 100% completely is Russia going to pay to rebuild that. Who's going to pay? Well, we already spent, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars in its defense. And I don't know how this war is going to end over there, but I'm tired of wars. It goes back to go where you're treated best. And everybody who's watching me should think. What would you do if you had to leave where you're living right now? Do you have a plan? Do you know where you could go? Do you have a residence permit to get you into another country? Do you have a passport to get you out of the country that you're in? If you thought, if you lived in a country right now, and, and you thought there was a 75% chance that that country could be involved in a massive conflict or even God forbid, a nuclear conflict. Is there a place you could go? Do you have a plan? Do you have a go bag packed? Do you know where you can go to? Do you have another place that you've organized and have, you know, I do know people who, who have a residence permit in other places. You know, a, a country, they'll let them in. And, you know, uh, if there's a, uh, if there's a conflict between superpowers, uh, is Chile like, Chile likely to be involved or Brazil or Argentina? What about the island of Vanuatu? Or even the islands of St. Kitts and Nevis or St. Lucia or Antigua, somewhere down the Caribbean. They're not going to be high on people's target list. Do you have a way of getting there? I mean, this is Memorial Day. Lots of people have died. In our history. If you. If you fail to plan. Then you can plan to fail. And for those of you with loved ones that you live with. And care about. Somebody's got to be the adult in the room and doing the thinking.
Anyway, leading with that, if you did have to flee to another location, another country, how would you get access to money? Do you have a bank account in that country with a little cash in it, just a little bit? Do you have some gold stored in that country with a little gold? Not a lot, just a little, something to do. Or unless it was total worldwide collapse, you could probably count on Bitcoin. Once you got there, you might be able to convert a little Bitcoin into their local currency and get some food and survive for a while. It's Memorial Day. Thank you for all those who have served. I'm s God bless all the families who lost loved ones in the last 100, 200 years, both in the United States and those who fought against them. It's, it's a terrible thing. And uh, hopefully the buzzword of this last few years has been artificial intelligence. Everything is about acquiring artificial intelligence. How about we do away with general stupidity or natural stupidity? That's all, folks.